Okay, let's get this started. Hi, I'm Director Z, or Louis Sapatero, and this is the Director's Realm. And today we're going to be talking about remakeability, which is a word I sort of made up, but it's about a subject a lot of people know about. Remakes, and reboots, and the like. Reason I want to talk about that today is because Hollywood seems to be in a state of remakes as of the trailers for Candyman and The Invisible Man being in theaters right now, and also two rumored remakes that I'm very, very skeptical and very much want to rant about. So we're going to go just right into it and let's just discuss the product and stuff of film right now. Basically, all I have to say about the Candyman trailer is that I'm very excited for what's in store. I'm excited for Nia DaCosta and what she has for this story and how she's going to tell it in a contemporary way. And I'm also just any big fan of Jordan Peele and what he produces and anything that he writes or makes. One thing I can't really stand, though, is that everyone just has this idea that Peele is actually directing this movie when... You know, it's all over that he's a producer, and we all know that he is a great filmmaker, and we want him to make more movies, but at the time he's producing right now, he's um, working with J.J. Abrams to make Lovecraft Country, which I'm actually waiting for some kind of update about, because I'm reading the book, and I'm really excited for that series on HBO. The fact of the matter is that Jordan Peele's doing great things in Hollywood, and he's making a name for himself in the producing game, and that's awesome, but... We as fans of just movies in general just need to realize that we can't just automatically give credit to someone who's already made a name for himself in Hollywood and just say that he's responsible for everything that's in Candyman. He's like, oh, he wrote Candyman. Oh, he's directing Candyman. Oh, well, it's Jordan Peele's Candyman. Well, just do yourself a favor and actually look up who's directing the project. Don't just go on Twitter and just be like, I'm excited for Jordan Peele's next directing movie. And he's like, he's not even directing it. Because you have the power to research the truth. You just don't. Now, it's good to reboot a series like Candyman because Candyman is a movie that's been around for many years. Much like The Invisible Man that's already in theaters right now and apparently is doing well. I need to watch immediately because I've heard great things and I really love Elizabeth Moss. And the director is the same guy who did Upgrade and holy shit, Upgrade was my fucking movie. But also, The Invisible Man is also a series that deserved to be remade because of the old, old school series, the old school Universal movie that came out so many years ago. So, of course, the remakeability of that movie is very high and that you can do a lot with that story. And I guess that's what they did because it's not the same story as the H.G. Wells novel or the same as the Universal first movie of The Invisible Man. So, Candyman and The Invisible Man are really good examples of remakes that are doing good that are doing right well okay maybe i'm counting a little bit early for Candyman because it hasn't come out yet but come on i think it looks good and you want to watch it and i think you think it looks good just saying now let's kind of take a look at some bad remakes that um well i don't okay uh, speaking from the heart i'm not a big fan of remakes there are some good examples that i brought up like Okay, here's an example. Evil Dead. I was very skeptical when they first announced that they were remaking Evil Dead as the original will always have a special place in my heart and will always haunt me to my freaking core. Especially the girl that goes, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you. I swear to God, I was walking in the middle of the night and I would just hear, just hear the smallest little thing and that little melody would just play and it's dark. So I just run straight to my room, just nearly pissing myself even though I just finished coming back from the bathroom but when the remake came out and my dumbass found myself in the theater even though I was complaining the whole time I really enjoyed it I really enjoyed how it was its own thing and that it built its way on that and that it was so gory and that it was good like it was hard for me to say that after watching it like it was good I used to roast the shit out of it back in the day so people didn't know that I thought it was good. But it's because it was a remake and every time they try to do a remake it's never as good as they want it to be. But they don't. it doesn't matter whether a remake is good, they make money regardless. But 
There are just some movies you don't touch. Does anyone really want to see a Jurassic Park remake in about 10 years? Well, I mean, they already did that, but technically it's a reboot. Jurassic World is just continuing the story. I guess a reboot is, like, continuing the story where it is now, and, like, a lot of the characters are returning as old, and there are new characters to introduce that have somewhat or little to do with the old characters. But a remake is just a shot for shot of just something that was before that they're just trying to make now. And some of them are just really, really bad. But here goes, I'm just going to talk about this rumored film that they're discussing remaking. And I saw it on Twitter, so I don't know how reliable it is, but I'm seriously mad if they're considering remaking this. I'm a huge fan of Stephen King movies, and if you are too, then you better buckle up because what I'm about to tell you, you might fucking flip. They're considering remaking Misery, the legendary Kathy Bates, Annie Wilkes performance, Misery. Yes, that one. I, I don't know why. I don't know who in Hollywood said, hey, let's remake that classic Stephen King movie. No! Just no, please. Oh, okay, like whatever decisions you're making, however you came to the... I feel like they just put every classic or good or bad old movie that they have on a dartboard and just throw the fucking dart and say, Oh, let's remake this for shits and giggles. <laughs> but Misery? Of all the Stephen King movies they could have went... They could have remade Silver Bullet. They could have remade Graveyard Shift. They remade Pet Cemetery, and they also freaking remade. Wait, yeah, they remade Carrie with Chloe Grace Moretz. They they like remaking Stephen King movies, but Misery is not a good option. It's a terrible option. I feel like there's a lot of a lot of adaptations you could have went down before you reached that point. Maybe even a Dead Zone reboot. Not reboot. Remake. Maybe even a Dead Zone remake. I would be okay with that, even though the Christopher Walken original is great. I would rather you do a Dead Zone remake than remake Misery, because, oh my god, have you rewatched that movie? I actually recently rewatched Misery, just because I heard about this news, and I was just inf infuriated. Kathy Bates won a freaking Oscar for her performance as Annie Wilkes. And it doesn't get any more intimidating than Annie freaking Wilkes. Stephen King wrote a fantastic character in Annie Wilkes. That entire book, and the entire film. It's an excellent adaptation. Everyone loves Misery. I don't know anyone who isn't a Stephen King movie fan and doesn't have Misery at least in their top five favorite adaptations. And if you haven't seen Misery, for the love of God, watch it, please. It's excellent. And then you'll realize why I'm so angry they want to re they want to remake this. They want to remake this timeless film. And as much as I want to say like, no, please, no, it's not. If they're going to go on deaf ears, they're going to be like, I can't hear you, money. But I don't care. Like at the same time, I'm just letting out my feelings that this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. They should really go through a different list of Stephen King movies that they could do before Misery. Don't touch Misery. Oh my god. And in my head, I'm thinking they're probably just going to make it about some stupid web author who gets kidnapped. And instead of her being like this crazy freaking author person... Instead of her being obsessed with an author, she's obsessed with some fucking Tumblr blogger or someone on Twitter. Someone with a fucking social media presence. They're gonna make misery about a social media influencer. I, I shit you not. Like, oh my god. I don't understand why they have to do this when they're already making a Stephen King kind of prequel show with Castle Rock. With Lizzie Kaplan and the girl from... Uh, eighth grade, whose mind really is, whose name escapes my mind right now. Her, her, her name escapes my, her mind escapes my name. Ellie Fisher, Ellie Fisher. They just did this prequel series with Annie Wilkes and the whole story behind. I don't want to give anything away, but Lizzie Kaplan and Ellie Fisher play a mom and daughter on the show in the second season, and it's it's great. It's a great it's a great show. You guys need to watch it immediately. But 
that's all I can really say about this remake of Misery is that oh my god I don't know how how this is gonna go down but I think it's gonna go bad there was also this news about a Planet of the Apes remake and in my head I was like huh didn't they just do that or is it like a reboot and it was like a prequel like a prequel remake and they were just trying to like take the story what happened before the Planet of the Apes by just putting a bunch of names in front of the name the Planet of the Apes first it was Rise of the Planet of the Apes then it was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes then it was War of the Planet of the Apes. Next is going to be the end of the War of the Dawn of the Rise of the Justice Apes. But apparently it's not a remake. It's not a reboot. The director confirmed that they're actually continuing the story. So basically they're continuing Caesar's legacy and how it ended in War for the Planet of the Apes. The one with Woody Harrelson. That was a great that was a great ending to a great trilogy. Um, but no, I'm really excited that they're just continuing the story instead of trying to remake. I was like, why are they going to remake this prequel? Didn't the prequels just come out and they're going to remake something that came out like recently? What's stopping Hollywood from re from just remaking whatever the hell they want? What are they going to do? Remake Gone with the Wind. Remake all of these classic movies. You're going to go down the lit. You want to remake Pulp Fiction in another 15 years? Yeah! Let's reboot Indiana Jones! Woohoo! Another rumor or another unreliable source of a possible remake coming out. And, um. Well, actually, it is a reliable source because Tom Holland said that someone approached him about it and. Well, I think a lot of people are disappointed already about the, the news that they may or may not be rebooting the Back to the Future franchise. And I get everyone's frustration. I'm also very upset about this news, personally, because the Back to the Future films are freaking timeless. And you just don't touch those movies. You don't touch movies like that. Back to the Future was already a freaking franchise pleaser back when it was released. In what way, shape, or form do you feel the necessity to tell yourself, let's remake it. Let's just remake Back to the Future. God, like, what? what is the criteria that you guys go through to remake something? What does a movie have to go through when it's first released to get remade later? Why are films released at all? Why are people writing new ideas each and every day for you to just reject them and to give millions of dollars to remakes that are probably going to do horribly? Now, I did talk about Evil Dead being a good remake. I talked about Candyman and The Invisible Man. And I also talked about the Back to the Future possible remake and the Misery remake. Now let's go down the list of just some horrible, bad remakes that we remember Ugh. for those of you who probably didn't see it and I'm happy that you didn't there was a remake of Psycho and I think the less said about it is probably better but if you just want a shot for shot remake with extra sound effects and more lighting and I guess if you're just kind of into remakes of movies that you'd like, if you're a fan of the 1960 classic, then watch this. Not for watchability reasons and not because I think you'll like it, but because I feel like people should know that this existed so that they don't repeat it. You know, the past tends to repeat itself, and it's better to just know about it. I freaking love the Point Break movie with Patrick Swayze and Keanu. And then I heard about the remake and I told myself, it's gonna do horrible. And guess what? It did horrible. Why would you remake Point Break? That was your first mistake. You shouldn't even put those... You shouldn't even put remake or Point Break in the same sentence. And Red Dawn... I just feel like that movie came out at a bad time. I also felt like the movie was just kind of forgettable. Like, there wasn't any kind of action scene or any sequence that I remember from it that was discernible from the first movie. I mean, they even tried the Wolverines part, and it just didn't 
bode well. And yes, with remakes, I'm going to have to bring up that 2016 Ghostbusters remake. Because they advertised it like it was a reboot, like we were going to see all of our favorite classic Ghostbusters and they were going to bring up new people, but it was blatantly the same exact movie, just gender swapped. And we'll take this for as an example. If I told you that I was just basically gender swapping a female team like Charlie's Angels, which is basically, I guess, the Fast and Furious films, you'd be upset that I gender swapped some characters that you originally knew as men or as women. So why does Hollywood think it's okay to take the Ghostbusters and just make a female team? If they had made it a good movie, that would have just been understandable, but it, it just a lot of it just fell flat, and a lot of it just felt like they were just shooting a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original. And yes, Chris Hensworth in it, and yes, he's hot, but that's not a joke. I mean, he was funny in the movie. He's what really, he's the only reason that I kind of chuckled at the movie. Everything else was just meh. But that's the thing, just don't reboot original male teams or female teams and gender swap them and don't market it as a reboot when it's clearly a remake that's why I'm glad they're changing it up with the Ghostbusters series now and it's like about the kids and like the trailer just makes it seem like it's a different story so I'm looking forward to that Ghostbusters I already hear you guys jumping to conclusions. Oh, this guy's a misogynist. He only liked the Chris Hemsworth parts of the female Ghostbusters movie. Hey, back off. I'm a huge fan of the SNL comedians Leslie Jones, Melissa McCarthy, Kate McKinnon, and Kristen Wiig. But they didn't write the movie. They didn't direct the movie. They were acting in the movie. And there's nothing wrong with their performances. I think the writing is bad and I think the idea is bad and a lot of the jokes just kind of fall flat. It's nothing to do with their performances. It's just there was nothing notable or memorable about the film that stood out to me that made it a good movie. It was just a blatant remake like a lot of blatant remakes. Like you remember the Planet of the Apes remake that Tim Burton did with Mark Wahlberg? Do you remember the day the earth stood still remake i have a hard time pronouncing that title i mean i love keanu reeves but that er day the earth stood still remake was terrible i'm sorry it, no it was bad they just focus more on the effects than the actual story and then you want to talk and then let's talk about total recall the cult i i'm a i'm a fan of colin farrell but i was not a fan of that movie there wasn't even a mention of mars in the new total recall movie I'm also a huge fan of Jackie Earl Haley. Did I like that Nightmare on Elm Street reboot? No, not at all. I, I like Nicolas Cage. Well, in some things. Well, no, I like Nicolas Cage. I like Nicolas Cage as an actor. I'm not afraid to admit that. But that Wicker Man remake was not it. It really was not. And I could admit that that bees scene was just... I just watch it for the laughability. Just to laugh, honestly. Like, it's just so bad. But the thing is, at the end of the day, Hollywood is Hollywood, and for actors, the check is the check. And they get money, they get paid, and they get paid to do what they do. And I'm not judging them for it. I'm not saying, they're sellouts, and they should do, like, real projects. No, they can do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> if they're making money for it, if that makes them happy, then more power to them. That's good for them. In Hollywood, I think actors alike and directors alike just have to be prepared that if something's going to be bad or something's going to be a bomb, they got to stand by it. As artists, we all got to stand by a piece of shit that we make. And as artists, we have to admit that everything we make isn't going to be a masterpiece. But that doesn't mean everything we're going to make is going to be a piece of shit either. But what I'm saying is that as long as you just stand by it and you're still proud of it as an actor, as a whatever you are, that's what art is. You still got to be proud of what you do and you still got to be proud of what you've produced. I mean, I respect the hell out of Sam Rockwell. And I, lo I love his work. I did not like that Poltergeist remake. Was he good in it? Yeah, he made me laugh. I, li I liked him in it. 
And I like Jackie O'Haley. And I like Nicolas Cage. I like Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig. And Leslie Jones and Kay McKinnon. But can I shit on their remakes? Yes, I can. I feel like a certain criteria has to be met before you just decide to remake a movie. Like, if it's a classic and it was well-received at the box office when it first came out, and it's like a cult classic, don't touch that movie. Just don't. Okay? Maybe if it's been out for a long time, example, like Candyman and the Invisible Man, then, yeah, its remakeability kind of increases, and you could just add more to it and go with a different original story like they're doing with those movies. But trying to reboot things like Back to the Future and Misery just feels like another money grub money scheme, like just a scheme to profit. And I'm not judging saying it's wrong or it's dumb or it's it shouldn't be done because it's going to happen whether whatever the fuck I believe, it's going to happen. But I just feel like it's going to be a wake up call one way or another. Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the week after, whether it's in another freaking year, it doesn't matter. A wake-up call is going to come soon to them. And they're going to be like, fuck, why did we waste all of our money on these shitty-ass remakes when we could have been making original pictures? We could have been making original things. Hell, we could have even put the money to making good remakes, to remakes that are actually, you know, to things that should be worth remaking. Instead of just remaking every little damn thing. I mean, maybe that lesson will happen. Maybe it's just all in my head. It doesn't matter, actually. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. I'm just ranting about this because remake or no remake, some of them are bad, some of them are good. Just like in the movie business, some movies are good and some movies are bad. And whether your favorite genre some crime or some mystery some romances are bad and some are good you just gotta take the good with the bad that's life man you know you just gotta look at it that way that sometimes people go into movie theaters with too much expectations too much criticisms already in their heads that they just want to nitpick things and say oh well it was shitty because of this and it's like well you sat down and watched it anyway so who's really the idiot here Opinions do vary. I mean, I know some people who do like remakes a lot. And I know some people who do enjoy the remakes that I've talked about that I didn't particularly like. But, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to like what you like. But I stand by my opinions and I stand by the movies that I don't like. And if you don't like them, well, I mean, if if you don't like them as well, then you see where I'm coming from. But if you like them and you don't like how I feel, well... Yeah. You don't have to keep hearing me. You could get the fuck out. In conclusion, do I want remakes? Yes. Do I want Hollywood to stop remaking every movie? Yes. Do I want Hollywood to stop rebooting or remaking movies that I thoroughly enjoy? Yes. Will they? Absolutely not. Because they don't give a fuck. I mean, they don't have to. They really don't. I'm just sharing my opinion because this is what I do. It does really beg that question, though. What criteria do they have to look at to remake a movie? Are they planning to remake every movie they've ever made? Are they planning to remake superhero movies at one point? Are they planning to remake video game movies? I mean, the video game movies should really be considered because... I wouldn't mind a Super Mario Brothers movie that doesn't look like the one that originally came out in the 90s. Well, I'm going to sign off now. Thank you guys so much for listening in to the Madcast. This has been a Mad Struction podcast. My name is Louis Sapatero, a.k.a. Director Z. And I'm signing off. I'll see you on the next one. I'm looking forward to doing more of these, actually. Later.